Hello everyone, it's Somnia from UnrealTech.net and welcome to another video in the Unreal Tech Unreal Engine 4 C++ course. This video is called Keyboard Smash, Visual Studio for Unreal Engine 4 and Plugins for Ease of Life. We are going to look up how to set up Visual Studio, some community and official plugins we can add to make our life easier easier when it comes to coding if we set it up exactly as epic games outlines and using their extension the macro community plugin you guys will be able to follow me action for action as we go throughout this course so what are we going to go through in this video by now i hope you have downloaded visual studio 2015 community if not do that now, we'll be using it in this video. Using Visual Studio 2015 community, we're gonna follow the Epic Games guide to set up Visual Studio. We're gonna set up the workspace exactly as they show and make sure it's as good as possible. We're gonna set up a better workspace, show you a few little setups. I'm gonna show you my workspace and how to save it and how to go back to the default workspace. We're gonna look at using IntelliSense, yes or no. Do we want to wait for IntelliSense to look at our code? It's not fully supported in Unreal yet, but it's a lot better than it used to be. Or no, are we just gonna depend on our skills? And we're going to add the debugging visualizer.net viz files so that we have all the debugging symbols available to us. After that, we're gonna look at some plugins that we can add to make coding in the Visual Studio IDE much much, much, much easier. We're gonna add the Unreal Visual Studio extension. And my favorite, we're gonna add the macro community plugin. This allows you to use IntelliSense to show if you are typing in macros wrong. And it also adds all the macros to IntelliSense and to suggestions for autocomplete and such. Optionally, we're gonna possibly look at Visual Assist X or VAX as it's known from uh, Old Tomato. I personally use it, but I have disabled it for this course, so it will be completely optional. So with that said, remember our motto, create your way, and let's get started. So again, by now, I hope that you've downloaded and installed Visual Studio Community 2015. Again, you only need the Visual C++ components, and I suggest the Windows 8.1 slash Windows Phone 8 SDK, especially if you are on Windows eight or earlier because you're going to need that or you can just install the entire thing depending on your hard drive space but you will need visual c at a minimum when you install it so make sure you have that installed it's totally free and i was going to do a little hello world standard c intro bit but i'm going to assume people have a general knowledge of some programming language or at least blueprint knowledge if you don't i suggest starting a new account on code academy still and go through some of the javascript Python, Ruby, PHP, something like that, and just get a general sense for programming syntax and just the general workflow of programming. We are gonna go to the setting up Visual Studio for Unreal Engine 4 documentation page, and we are gonna follow this guide word for word. Open up Visual Studio and you will be greeted with roughly this page. We are going to follow the setting up Visual Studio for UE4 page word for word. I'm going to go along with it. I've reset everything to completely stock so it's exactly as you will find it more or less. I've already set the settings but we'll look at where to find them. So the first thing we're going to want to do is follow the recommended settings and increase the width of the solution configurations drop down menu. So that's this this little toolbar right here. So it'll allow you to choose your solution configuration. So for example, shipping, development, debugging, so on and so forth, and your platforms, Win64, Win32, so on and so forth. Now, this stock width doesn't fit the Unreal text strings, I guess rather. So what we need to do is extend it. If you hit the little arrow at the end and go to add or remove buttons, and then go to customize, Make sure you're on the toolbar radio button. In the drop down next toolbar, we wanna to go to standard to choose the standard setup. So we'll go to standard and you'll see it changes things a little bit. So we get all this new stuff and you'll see we get the solution configuration, solution platforms and so on and so forth. What we need to do is extend the length of these, um, these drop down menus. So the first one we're gonna choose is the solution configurations. If you hit modify selection, it'll give you, you can rename it. So you could rename the tooltip if you wanted, but we're looking for the width. 
by stock it's 65 and as you can see up there that is so short you would never see unreal engine debugging or unreal engine development shipping or so on and so forth you know all those combinations you would never see this you need to modify the selection and set it to 200 pixels that'll allow you to see all of unreal's solution configurations the solution platforms i believe it is stock at 160 that will work just fine so once you've set up your solution configurations to that width under the toolbar standard hit close now we're going to want to add the solution platforms drop down which is right here which you shouldn't have by default so to do that again you go to the add or remove buttons uh drop down all the way down here and you check off solution platforms so stock yours will look like that you want to make sure you have solution platforms checked those are the two that i suggest that you definitely have what you'll most likely want and debug target is a good one to have the rest of them are more or less optional make sure you have solution platforms and solution configurations enabled and solution configurations set to 200 pixels now when you compile a c++ class it will bring up an error list which is default with visual studio I'm working with c++ however that error list does not line up with the errors you get either in the output window from unreal build tool or in the output window when you compile in editor using hot reload so we want to turn off the error list window or else we're going to try to read errors that make no sense and will go nowhere and we'll just be going in circles so to turn that off all you need to do is go to the tools drop down and go to options now we're going to be spending most of our time configuring in the options setup so again that's tool tools options so to turn off the error list we want to go to projects and solutions and the first one right here and turn off always show error list if build finishes with error so by default it'll be on and it'll show the error list which will always come up because there's always going to be errors because it's not standard c plus so you want to turn that off so you don't get confused with regular C++ errors that will show up. That is good there. Other things we're going to want to look at is we're going to want to go into our tools. We're going to want to go into options. We're going to want to go into text editor, C slash C++ as the language we'll be working in, and then go to the view option, the very last one, the show inactive blocks, turn to false it will be true but if you turn it to false some things uh will be not grayed out if you turn it to true some things will be grayed out and it makes it hard to read and sometimes you you can't even edit it it's it's a rare instance but it's just something that makes it a lot easier when it does come up something that is uh, more of a preference but very useful is to set external dependency folders to hidden so to do that we go to text editors c++ again and under the advanced option we want to go all the way to disable external dependencies folder so that will be false by default we want to set it to true that way we're not getting the engine dependencies and so on and so forth and stuff that we just don't need for working with a project if you're doing engine source code modifications leave this to false but set it to true for just doing regular C++ and Unreal Engine. It will also make startup and IntelliSense a lot easier because it won't have to parse all those files. Another thing we want to do is turn off edit and continue features. That is under debugging, which is down here. Under debugging, so at the very bottom, enable edit and continue. By default, it should be true, set it to false. So we don't need this, make sure to disable that. Now, this is again a preference. Uh, some people hate IntelliSense because it's a bit slow, but especially for beginners and even people like myself that just have an intermediate knowledge, um, IntelliSense is definitely very good for figuring out member functions and such and fixing little errors. It used to be where you turned it completely off because there was no support for it, but Unreal or Epic rather has added good support for it, so we want to turn it on. We want to go into the C++ text editor menu again and go under advanced IntelliSense. There we go, halfway down. Disable IntelliSense again, we used to just totally disable it, but now you can set it to false. So make sure that these five keys are set to false. They should be false by default, except for disable IntelliSense. 
So that is everything to do with options. So we can hit OK. So now let's set up our workspace. So this is the stock window. Now what I have it set up, if we go to window, apply windows layout, I have a Unreal and Vax layout. There's also the UE4 standard layout that I think it adds when you add the plugin, which we'll get to, which is like this which works, but I have mine set up like so. So my code would be up here and I have my output window down here for compiling and my solution explorer is down here. Now this could be a bit hard to read because you'll be scrolling through lots and lots of source files. So some people like to have the solution explorer docked somewhere else. You can, you can go to the side here and you can dock it to somewhere else. Some people like to have it on the side like stock. So I might suggest that and maybe putting the output window on the bottom that's definitely easier to read down there so that's a possible setup I prefer it the other way to set this up go to view make sure output is turned on and that will open the output window take the output tab click and drag it to bring it undock it and let's dock it to the bottom of the screen and then let's just make it a little bit shorter you only need to read a bit of it when you are compiling and this gives us the most screen real estate possible over here we should only need a little bit of width just to read class names in our solution now these other windows um, we have the error list here that should be disabled. So, so just hit the X button. We want the solution explorer. The class view is very helpful. So if you don't have that open, you can go to view and class view. This is all under the view tab, but we will close that just to keep things nice and simple. The team explorer, we're not using, well, we are using GitHub, but we're not gonna work with it in Visual Studio. We're gonna do it manually. So we can close that. And this is for Visual Assist X. So I'm gonna close that because I wanna make sure we have compatibility with everybody viewing this course. So just like that, so view, output and view solution explorer and close the rest set it up the way you like by taking the tabs and dragging them where you want and then resizing them and we are good to go so we can go ahead and set up our plugins before we do that let's save our workspace so that we can always go back to this or the default one or edit it so just go to window go to save window layout and give it a name. So I'm gonna call this UE4 CPP course window layout and then hit enter or okay. And you'll see the layout was saved and you can find it at any time under window, apply window layout and you'll see that you have a different one. So I'm gonna work under this UE4 CPP course window layout. Now let's look at some plugins. So if I go to my tools, extensions and updates, you will notice that I have the UE4 IntelliSense plugin, the Unreal Visual Studio plugin, and I believe that's it that we will be dealing with. So let's start with Unreal Visual Studio. That's a stock one by Epic Games. To get that, let's go to the setting up Visual Studio for UE4 page again, very bottom, the Unreal Visual Studio extension. So see the Visual Studio extension page for more information. So open up that page. We need to find it for our engine version. So find your Epic Games folder. We're working with 4.12, you may be working with 4.14. Just find the engine version you are using. We're gonna look for engine, extras. Then we're gonna to go to Unreal VS. Now, if you're using Visual Studio 2013 for some reason, that won't work with anything later than 4.9. So we want Visual Studio 2015. Now you can double click this dot VIX, this Microsoft Visual Studio extension. You can double click on it and it will add it. Mine should say that it's already added, but you'll get this and then you can hit install. Actually, it looks like I have an update to install. There we go, perfect, it's been installed. Close and then in Visual Studio, again, it will show up under tools, extensions and updates and down at the bottom on Unreal Visual Studio. And you can enable automatic updates, which I suggest under tools, options, environments, extension updates, but we won't go through that. Generally, you just find this in every new Unreal Engine version and uh, double click it to install it. Now to show it, what we need to do is close this window and go to our toolbar here somewhere and go to add or remove buttons, customize, go to toolbars and we are going to check off the Unreal Visual Studio check mark and you'll see that adds this little setup here and that will become more apparent once we do some actual coding how that comes in useful. So just make sure it's checked off, hit close again, it auto applies and so now we have our startup project 
and our command line options. So again, add or remove buttons, customize, toolbars, and then you can add it anywhere. And lastly, we need to add the debugging visualizer symbols. So to do that, where we found the Unreal VS extension, go back a directory, two directories, sorry, to your engine version, engine extras, and Visual Studio debugging. Open that up, and there's this ue4.natviz, and as you can see, that's VC++ debugger visualization file. So this, this shows all the debugging symbols that you will need when working with the Unreal Engine 4 API. So copy this, and we want to paste it to two locations. We want to go to your OS directory. We want to go to users and your username. Then we want to go to my documents. So I'm going to go to my documents. Then you want to go to Visual Studio 2015, go under visualizers and paste it in there. Replace it if it's already there. The last place, make sure this is this for your user, but also we want to install it to the actual Visual Studio installation directory in case we switch users or something. So go to, again, wherever Visual Studio is installed. Usually it's under program files on your OS drive. Look for Microsoft Visual Studio, Microsoft Visual Studio 12.0 under common seven packages, debugger, visualizers, UE4.NAPVIS. Again, I have an old one. You can see 23 KB, replace the file. Administrator privileges, yes, 27. Perfect, I'm even up to date now, so we're good to go. We have our debugging symbols. We've set up our workspace. Again, make sure that you save this window layout to your customized layout. If you haven't already, it will save your toolbars and such. Alrighty, so let's look at some unofficial plugins now. So the one that I love that I absolutely depend on, Unreal Engine 4 Visual Studio IntelliSense macro specifiers. Now, this is noted as, if we go to our extensions, it's noted as the UE4 IntelliSense plugin. Um, so to download that, just search for this thread on the forums. The link is obviously up top here. The extension UE4 Visual Studio IntelliSense macro specifiers. I just Google UE4 Visual Studio macro plugin and you'll find this. And it shows you why it's so useful if, you, if you're if you're working with macros, which we will be a lot because Unreal Engine uses heavy macros, as you can see, U class is a macro, generated body is a macro, U property is a macro, force inline is a macro, U function is a macro. We'll be using tons of them, and it, and it, sh it shows you see if you type in um, don't exist, it says don't exist is not a valid U property specifier. And this guy keeps it up to date. Very, very cool. I highly suggest it. So to install it, go to the Visual Studio Gallery where it says download the UE4 IntelliSense VSIX. Download it. So open it up. It'll install. I've already got it. It should warn us or say it's good, whichever. Yep, it's already installed. We're good to go. Perfect. So make sure you have that installed. You can verify that it's the UE4 IntelliSense under your extensions and updates. And we are good to go. So I think we have covered everything in regards to setting up Visual Studio. Now, again, I do use Visual Assist X. I've got it disabled. It's got a ton of extra features. It basically allows you to replace IntelliSense. So you don't have to wait that second or two for IntelliSense to catch up. It's just boom, boom, boom. It's right there. However, you will lose that macro plugin. So it's kind of a catch 22. Uh, if you do want it, there is a free trial at holetomato.com. So you can download the free trial. I, I highly suggest it for coding in C++ or C Sharp, especially C++. But uh, we won't be using it since it is a paid plugin and since it does mess around with that macro plugin. So with that said, uh, in the next videos, we are going to set up a C++ project in the Epic Games Launcher in the engine. And we're going to talk about why to never use a blueprint setup first, why to always go to C++ first, and then we're going to... We're going to look at how to reset a project. We're going to add some classes. We're going to do a little, uh, we're going to do Hello World UE4 style, I think, first. Then we're going to do a guessing game UE4 style just to get used to not only C and just general code, but also so that we get used to the UE4 API. We're going to look at preprocessor directives, naming standards, so on and so forth. We're going to look at class hierarchy and then. 
we're gonna do probably just we're gonna make a little game maybe something like uh collect coins like mario or something we'll, we'll make a little game but yeah we're gonna start with some simple stuff just to get used to programming in the unreal engine 4 api we'll look at how to access actors and so on and so forth so with that said uh anyways i'm gonna leave it off there this one's getting quite long so remember our motto create your way and we'll see you next time